What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I did not finish the Woodlands Marathon. What the heck happened? I'm gonna tell you all about that in this video. We're also gonna go over what is next for me. Alright guys, so I freaking just redeemed myself for my 100k where I DNF that race in back in 2019 I think. So I just did my 100k, kicked but I actually did a really good time when I did my 100k and then on Saturday I DNF that race so now I have to go back to Woodlands and redeem myself again. I just took a long time to redeem myself for my 100k. Now I got one more race to do to redeem myself. So what did happen during that race? Uh, everything went pretty good. I think that the day of the race, I knew it was gonna be a tough race just because it was gonna be warmer. And you know what? I know I probably shouldn't have been a pacer, but at the time when I did sign up, I wasn't expecting it to be really hot temperatures. And I think a lot of the pacers that paced that day didn't even get their time because it was so hot. And you know what, Tony's pacing strategy was a little bit faster than what I would have liked for myself. I would have liked to do more even splits, but what his thinking was, and I kind of agreed with him that we should go a little bit faster at the beginning because it was gonna be cooler. Because when the sun came out, the sun came out and that just blasted our bodies and increased our heat a lot. So it just was really bad when the sun came out as you saw with myself. Uh, but for me, I would actually have liked to keep it more on a 13 to 13, 10 pace rather than the pace that we had. We were kind of going almost a 12, 40, 44 pace for the first 12 miles. So a minute faster, which granted, I do think it was a tad too fast, but you know what, Tony, was able to get his time so in his mind and his pacing strategy it worked for him but for me it was a little bit too fast especially for a hot day like it was on that day so if i would have done it over again i probably would have let tony go ahead of me and i would have kept to my pacing strategy he would have kept to his pacing strategy that way they have two pacers to pace off of a one that's a little bit faster and one that's more steady that way that more people could stick with us rather than the way that it was but like i said tony did great he got his time he got 559 30 so perfect pacing tony congrats to you you did great i'm sorry that i let you down and let everybody else down that was out there trying to pace with us so what happened to me out on the course i was doing pretty good with a pace we end up doing a quarter mile run with a walk so it was quarter mile run walk to 0 0.030 so that's what we did you know 0.05 that's how much we walk which wasn't a lot of walking so i did tell tony later on we need to switch it to a tenth of a mile of walking and a quarter of a mile of running which was pretty good but i was trying to keep that pace which was a little bit too fast for me especially in the heat and we did great we passed mile 12 13 14 and then 15, I remember 15, seeing the water station. And at this point, the sun is blurring on us. I was not recording anymore because I knew that I was going to have a tough time. So I was working myself a little bit too much. I would have gone slower if I wasn't pacing. So I did take the water at mile 15, drink half a cup, put the other half over my head and ran. And uh, it was getting hot. I already could feel everything heating up like I could feel the heat in my ears feel the heat in my eyes I could just feel the heat coming out of me like I felt hot and the only other time I felt like this before was during habanero 100 when it was 95 degree temperatures and I was walking and this time it was a little bit cooler right it was so cooler but the heat was out the sun was out and I was overheating and I was pushing myself to get the time and pace that we were trying to keep up with so that's what happened. I was overheating miles 15. And at that point, there was water every mile and a half. But for some reason, during mile 15, they had the water over here on one side of the road. And there was a median in the middle. And there was an out and back. And on the way back, there was nobody giving water on this side of the road where we were coming back. And I thought for a second, maybe I should go over there and get some water. But that would mean me going off the course, you know, pretty off the course because that's a wide road over a median to the other side of the road to get water and then go back, which in hindsight I should have done, but I didn't because I thought there would be water down the road because we had been having water every mile and a half at that point, but there was no water. I decided to take a goo. The goo upset my stomach a little bit, so I threw up and then I threw up again 
and then I threw up again. <laughs> At this point, I'm like, I need water. I'm overheating. You know, my heart rate is already 170, 160. It's getting too high. I'm feeling hot. I took off my shirt to try to cool down and nothing was working. Uh, finally, a cop did stop us and give us water. We walked a little bit more. And then I took the water that the cop gave me, drank it, and I threw up again. So at this point, I'm like, man, I'm overheating. I'm too hot. My heart rate's high. I'm throwing up way too much. It's just better for me to call it. And I just called it at that point. So I was like, you know what? It's not worth me getting heat stroke out here and heat exhaustion. I don't want to die out here just because I'm trying to do a race. And if I did push on, I would still try to keep the pace that I was trying to keep. So I was overworking my body already. And it just wasn't smart for me to keep moving on. So when we saw the sag wagon at that point, we held it down. And that's when you saw me get on the sag wagon. And yeah, it is disappointing that I got on the sag wagon and didn't finish the race. But at the end of the day, my health is more important. I've been doing a ton of races to start off the year. And in fact, I started off in December with a 50 miler, January, the marathon, February, the 100K, February, also the Austin Marathon. And then now I try to do the Woodlands Marathon. So I am pushing my body over the limit, especially for a guy like me who is overweight. It's gonna be tough for me to be out there. But if I had water, if I had slowed down a little bit, I think I could have finished the race, but that's a moot point. It doesn't matter. I did quit the race and I was in that sag wagon. Sag wagon isn't a fun thing to be in at all because when I got in the sag wagon, I'm already overheating and they had no air conditioner. They had no air conditioner. They didn't offer me any water. I asked for water, they had none. So it was actually kind of bad to be in that sag wagon. And I was there for over an hour, probably closer to two hours, I was stuck in that sag wagon. But you know, like I said, it was a decision that I made and I was happy with it. I dealt with it. And that's just what you have to do when you're in the sag wagon. The one interesting thing that I have to say about sag wagon is whenever they were on the CB radio or the ham radios, they would say, we are behind the turtle. So they called the slowest runner on the course a turtle. I found that pretty interesting. And they're like, the turtle dropped off. Now we're finding a new turtle. So after every turtle dropped off, they would find the next slowest runner on the course and then follow them slowly in the sag wagon. But more power to those people who did stay on the course. Congrats to everybody who did finish the Woodlands Marathon. It was a tough, tough, hot day. I just wish they did have water on that long stretch. That three miles with no water, it was tough for me, especially as it was one of the hottest times of the day. It was the point where you're usually struggling during a marathon. So it was tough at that point too. And it just wasn't my day or my race. So I called it in and I think that if you do see the signs of dehydration, heat stroke, definitely don't push yourself past the point. I was even thinking myself, what would David Goggins do? David Goggins might have pushed on, but you know what? If I pushed on, I might have gone to the hospital, had an IV in me, and it just wouldn't be a good situation. So I am happy that I did call it, although it is very disappointing that I didn't finish it. But I will be back next year at the Willis Marathon 2023 to redeem myself, and I will destroy that race. I promise you that. So what is next for me on this channel? It's gonna be another marathon, I have a marathon this weekend. No, I'm just kidding, no more marathons, no more racing, I actually have no more races on my schedule. I'm just gonna take it easy now, I'm gonna take it easy, try to build my fitness up again, try to lose some weight, and just try to be it's a regular training runner like I was before. I actually don't think I've done a bunch of marathons until this last couple of months where I was training up from 100K and all these marathons. It just so happened that we got some deals for these marathons, so that's why I did it. Probably not the smart decision, but you know what? I tried and that's all that really matters. So yeah, coming up on the channels, I have a ton of reviews that I need to do. I have those new Shox headphones that I need to review. The Chorus watch that I've been wearing for all my races, I have that to review and a lot of other stuff coming up on the channel. So I hope you guys have enjoyed all the marathon content. I know a lot of people have subscribed to my channel because of it, but for the next couple of weeks, next couple of months, I don't have anything planned. So there'll be other stuff on my channel rather than running. I'm looking forward to going back into the gym, lifting some weights. I did get a rower that I need to review and I'm doing a 30 day challenge on that as well. So lots of other stuff coming on the channel. Hope you guys are enjoying this content. If you guys are, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to me if you aren't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.